Let's not do anything fancy and hop right into the coverage of the January 2022 Reaper Monthly. Uh, this list right here you see before you is the deck I brought to the top. So before we talk about the games, uh, I want to do a quick overview of the card by card. The top of the roster is a whopping 10 tribute summons, uh, one Hades, one Jinzo, then we got three Mobius, three Thestilus, and two Zaborg. Uh, Festalos here is the absolute MVP for the mix-up he provides, because the only counterplay against his effects is to dump out your hand, which in turn can be punished by the likes of the Mobius and the Zaborg. Uh, Jinzo is relevant against Warrior and Return decks, uh, Burn to a lesser extent, and then Hadas is great for both Dead Rat and the Monarch Mirror, so that gives us pretty good overall coverage. Uh, the rest of our monster lineup includes three Spirit Reaper, uh, two Magical Merchants, uh, two Frogs, and the Singleton Powerhouses of Breaker, DD Warrior Lady, Sangin, and Magician of Faith. Uh, Spirit Reapers are great walls that can help slow down the game if hands are bricky, but they also serve double duty in that their hand rips alongside Thestalos can totally defang our opponents. Merchant is the only unconventional choice in this lineup. Uh, I want more monsters that I can set going first, is part of the philosophy. Uh, Merchant can also dig for frogs, improving the action economy. We can get value off of it before tributing off, and it's also another level 1 body for our metamorphosis over here. Uh, the spells are three each of Brain Control and Soul Exchange to enable our big bunguses. These are the heart of the deck. And then we've just got the slew of busted one ofs right? The Limited Staples, Heavy Storm, Metamorphosis, Dark Hole, MST, Book of Moon, Scapegoat, Snatch Deal, Premature Burial, you know them, you love them, the All-Stars. Not only are most of these cards game determinative, but the variety gives our Magician of Faith a lot of flexibility in terms of what we get off of her flip. Then the trap lineup is short and sweet, trio of threatening roars alongside Torrential and Call of the Haunted. Uh, generally speaking, with a deck like this, our opponent playing one monster at a time and trying to poke at us is a good thing. We want to tribute their monsters on board, that's the heart of soul control, so flipping a card like Sakuretsu Armor would be a waste. What scares us are the OTKs, the decks that can drop Cyberstein or flip Return from the Different Dimension and try to kill us in one big shot before we can capitalize on the backswing. Uh, Threatening Roar, Torrential, and to some extent Scapegoat are all here to protect us from that line of play specifically. The sideboard has two Hot S and a Grandmark, in case I need to tweak the lineup, uh, three Kaiku to mess with Chaos and to some extent enemy frogs, a Cypher Soldier as a surprise for warriors, a Mystic Swordsman to punish Burn and Pac-Man decks, a Knock for... Uh, knock and the three dust tornadoes for pretty much the same reason uh, and three sakuretsu armor in case of all in otk decks that force me to have more of a back row safety net um, and yeah that's pretty much the deck so with that ado let's get into the games the first round of the swiss was against danger zone playing warriors uh, we both trade card for card early on and spend a long time drawing and passing neither of us with a normal summon uh, they do eventually find one, but make the mistake of flipping a second Solemn too early when I try to steal it instead of later when I try for the Tribute Summon. A negated Brain Control paves the way for Snatch Deal into a Jinzo for game. They get an early lead in the second game, winning the Sangin Beats race, before I eventually find my Treeborn Frog and start evening things out. A Kaiku banishes my frogs, but then I brain control the Kaiku, putting myself on 100 life, but forcing Danger Zone to Sakuretsu their own monster to not die. Uh, with both of us in top deck mode, I manage to get a clean hit in before they do, and that's the first round. Round 2 was against Trekkie, who piloted a Lakunga return list. The first game was fairly even, but she attacked in the wrong order for my back row twice, and it maybe cost them the set. Uh, the first time, she attacked directly first with a Hydrageddon when I had Scapegoat on board to safely fire afterward. Uh, the second time, they attacked directly with their Monarch first, letting me flip a call to Haunted after to wall off the rest of the team, giving me lethal on the crackback. The first major play of the second game wouldn't happen until a dozen turns in, where I dark hole my own Kaiku, call it back, and then banish both enemy frogs in one good hit. 
On the crackback, a Trekkie trades their snatch deal for my book, then uses Lakunga and a creature swap to take the Kaiku anyway, leaving me seemingly open. Uh, Trekkie makes the right call and leads my torrential tribute, opting to uh, keep the Kaiku set, but my new set's a scapegoat, walling her off for four turns. She flips up the Kaiku in main phase two, now that it's relatively safe, but my hand has the exact punishes in the form of MST to pop their swords, brain control to take one of their monsters, Festlos to hand rip, and then kill the other monster. It doesn't hit the dark hole in her grip, though, so when all the dust settles, both of us are left with open boards and almost nothing for cards to speak of. From there starts another long series of exchanges that keep her mostly on the defensive, trading cards off the top back and forth, but eventually she runs out of walls to stop the Bungus army, giving me the 2-0 win. Uh, Trekkie, for her part, ends up 4-2 at the end of the event, bubbling out in ninth place, a respectable finish, and may very well have taken Lukunga to top cut had she not had the misfortune of pairing against me in an early round. Round 3 is a Pac-Man matchup this time piloted by Peril. I go first and set one back row, my end lacking a normal summon. They set four, then dust shoot me for near perfect knowledge and tuck away my normal summon draw. Both my heavy and my soul exchange are met with solemns, leaving me with three dead bunguses in hand, but my opponent only on 2,000 lifelines. They think they've taken control of the game until I reveal my set on the first turn was Torrential Tribute the whole time, taking out both of their monsters, and a couple turns pass until I find a breaker, and that's the game. Game two, they don't have Solemn this time. I draw Heavy Storm off the top on my first turn, summon the Mystic Swordsman out of my sideboard, and they concede almost immediately after. Round four, I'm paired with fellow Season Zero competitor Kesha using a machine-based Chaos Return deck that found room for Stein and Limiter removal. The first game, I make this play, flipping Scapegoat to wall off four turns while I know she can't summon anything else to pressure me. When I don't have gas in hand and I know she'll have to either discard or set into my heavy storm, it made sense at the time, but what makes this a terrible idea was I'd forgotten she was playing Stein or Limiter Removal. The stalemate eventually clears and I'm sitting pretty with two monarchs to her two goat tokens, but then Kesha rips Stein off the top, which wouldn't have been enough, except she also had the Limiter Removal in hand and delivers my first game loss of the event. Game 2 starts when I play into Torrential with Mobius, trading three of my cards for two of hers. This seems pretty bad at first until I drop Festlos a few turns later and snipe Darkhole out of the way, meaning both of Kesha's sweepers are out of the picture for the rest of the duel, letting me extend all I want. On the crackback, Kesha has a chance to summon Jinzo and trade Monarchs, but doesn't, opting to try for a defensive line instead. However, I know she can't punish my extension, so I'm more than happy summoning a new beater and clearing both of her monsters, keeping my Bungus. Now she makes the Jinzo play with the aid of a Cyber Dragon, but opts not to crash still, which lets me steal it, then tribute my own Jinzo off the top for game. Game 3 starts with a double dust shoot ripping both of my monsters from the hand, but Kesha lacks a normal summon of her own to follow up, leading to a very slow start. Eventually, I find my footing, and Thanks to Cyber Dragon, this lets Kesha start playing the game as well. Chaos Sorcerer banishes my frog, and I take a couple big hits early on. I'm forced to take a risk by summoning this Spirit Reaper and attack to whittle away resources. Uh, it's a situation where if she draws Stein off the top again, I'm just flat out dead, but fortunately this doesn't happen, and the game is on. Instead, one last Cyber Dragon poke faked me down to 3000, but I've completely stabilized the match. Thestlos denies Kesha her dark hole, the only card in her hand at the time, which she should have said I controlled a spirit reaper, but whatever. Uh, we now hit the point, like just like the last game, where I can swarm as much as I like without fear of reprisal. Down to 200 life points, Kesha manages to wall off here with a spirit reaper. Now, I had a Magician of Faith set, and I could have brain controlled it for the game, except I had a full board of five monsters and was pretty sure I couldn't activate it. So instead, I played things safe, keeping Kaiku on the board, waiting for Kesha to draw a sorcerer she couldn't summon, and then dropping Thestlos for the match. My round five opponent is Altocleth, playing another Chaos variant that uses Apprentice Magician into Hand of Nephthys. I make a misplay early on, banishing my Warrior Lady for nothing because I'd forgotten the nonsense rulings that surround the goat version of Apprentice Magician. The rest of the game is fairly normal, trading cards one for one. Alto has a Tsukiyomi to stomp over any monarch I stick on the board, but 
uh, every monarch I stick to the board also drops their life by 2400, leaving them in dangerous territory very quickly. Uh, they end up setting the Tsukiyomi to wall up right when I'm able to drop Hades and walk over it for free, and the game is over not long after. They have Tsukiyomi again at the start of game two, which survives a Thessalos, and then they end up flipping a Rageki break on a Spirit Reaper just to try to protect it, but again they end up setting the Tsukiyomi, and again I have the Hades to walk over it, as well as a Kaiku to keep the Sork in their hand and off the table. The match ends in my favor, and despite Alto Plus 4 to finish, their breakers were solid enough to secure them 7th place in the Swiss overall. At this point in the Swiss, I'm undefeated, so while the final round against Fahrenheit won't matter for either of us qualifying, we decided to play it out regardless. Fahrenheit was playing an all-in Stein OTK deck, which made quick work of my list in the first round. They didn't have lethal, just made Cyber End, but my hand was four Monarchs and a Spirit Reaper, so there was nothing I could do about it for a quick first game. Game two, Fahrenheit tried to set up for a win off Cyber Jar, but I had all the safeguards in the world, and they couldn't find answers for my back row, not knowing I had the Roar set even if they did, and a Call the Haunted to profit off a potential True Name. They opted to play it safe rather than drop Stein into my back row, which gave me the time I needed to put in enough damage that Stein was shut off and the game was over from there. The third game is over quickly yet again once I've bricked for the second time. My one answer scapegoat could have walled off against several variations of Stein play, but not what the opponent had Dark Hole sitting in their hand the whole time. At the end of the Swiss now, I'm 5-1. Uh, Mr. Fahrenheit is 6-0. Joining me in the 5-1 slots are Flora Momo on Warrior, Samwise Gamgee on Burn, Baga Jr. on Monarch, and Krasens also on Monarch. Alto Clef on Chaos and Mr. Maple on Monarch fill in the remainder of the top 8 at 4-2. Uh, for those of you keeping count, of the 11 Monarch decks that entered at the start of the event, 4 of them are left in top 8, uh, which is a testament to their current underappreciation. Uh, without further ado, it's time to see how well they do in the finals. In the quarterfinals, my opponent was Baga Jr. with a unique breed of Monarch list. They're playing Last Will, but I found out after the set that this was a fake out. There's no Stein in the deck. Last Will was just a tool to find frogs or whatever other utility, and the core of the deck was closer to soul control than the OTK. Game one, I get to go first, but I have nothing I can conceivably play, while Baga's Spirit Reapers tear my hand to shreds. I eventually start to stabilize, only for Baga to special a Cyber Dragon before Dark Holing, just a Last Will for a third Reaper. Uh, Nobleman of Crossout trades with my own Reaper, and theirs connects, leaving me completely out of resources and out of the game. My first game loss not to a Cyberstein. Game 2 starts blow for blow, Zaborg for Zaborg, uh, both of us with frogs, but I brought in three Kaiku, and they only brought in one, and that serves to make the difference. They draw Brain Control to make their own Monarch, and I use Thousand Eyes Restrict to punish, and Heavy Storm, take their set into Hades, is the line that ends the game. Again, in Game 3, we both have Frog Opens. Again, Baga Jr. uses a Zaborg to pop my set Treeborn Frog. Again, Thousand Eyes is the punish. This time, though, when the dust settles, I'm the one who can pop direct the Spirit Reapers in inverse of the first game, and the match is mine not long after. Now into the semi-finals, I have my rematch against Mr. Fahrenheit and their Stein OTK deck. The first game goes very poorly, very fast. My grip on the first turn is six monsters, and they get to resolve Cyberjar to sculpt a hand of Trunade, Darkhole, and double Last Will for game. I needed to see a threatening roar, and just didn't, which put me on the back boot for the rest of the match. In game two, my hand is better, but lacks monarchs. I see the Cyberjar coming this time, but play into it, since I needed to see new cards just as much as they did, and I had the Threatening Roar to punish their attempt at a push. This time, I had the Dark Hole after as well, just to make it harder for Fahrenheit to get anything done. Sure enough, their hand would have represented lethal, but the Roar saved me for the one turn I needed. Back row protected their life total, but Thestalos and Spirit Reaper combined successfully to hit the Cannon Soldier, denying them their trigger for Last Will, uh, nor did they have an out for my Saku. As one last Haymaker, they go for Stein off the top anyway, but it can't get through my back row, and Zaborg does it on the crackback. The third game starts much slower than the others. 
I don't have the Reaper to aggressively push for resources, and they don't have the Cyber Jar to blow it off our hands. I have the Threatening Roar for their first attempt, and they won't attempt the second while I have the Saku represented. They see all three of their Sakus early, albeit one discarded, which allows them to, to protect their life total for a time, but eventually wind up in a stalemate situation. I have two Monarchs in hand, I can't play, and a Saku set. They have nothing left but a single Last Will at hand. I'm at 2800 LP, low enough that most decks could threaten me easily, but the Stein OTK deck needs some elaborate sequence to generate that kind of pressure. What follows is a long series of draw and pass until they find Breaker to pop my Saku on board. They do, bringing me to 1200 in the process, but this is a mistake, because it turns on my Treeborn Frog and the Zaborg in my hand in turn. I hit Fahrenheit down to 4000 before setting a fresh Sakuretsu. I have to play cautiously for a few turns though, since I'm now at 1200 and that's low enough that one good hit with a tomato could bowl me over, but a few turns of patience rewards me with a clean shot for game. Now I'm in finals, and the opponent from the other bracket is Samwise, the burn player. Samwise's only loss was to Altoclef, the Chaos player who was main decking Nephthys. I know I'm favored in this matchup since I pack my sideboard with a bit of overkill for dealing with stall strategies, but still I had to be careful not to let Samwise get the upper hand. Game 1 goes about as well as it possibly could have. I heavy storm their full backline, then soul exchange, tribute their morphing jar for Thestalos, and Samwise has no cards left in field or hand. He manages to poke me for a bit here and there, but not enough to stop me from winning a few short turns later. Game 2 goes great for me at first. I'm poking with Reapers they can't stop. I quickly get rid of two copies of Mask of Restrict. I'm up six cards to one, but that one card is the Morphing Jar, which brings them right back into the game. I make a critical misplay, blind firing Dust Tornado in the hopes I hit Solemn instead of tributing for Mobius first in case of the third mask. Of course, they drew the third mask off the jar, and though I quickly exhaust them of all cards, my offense is now extremely slowed if I can't out the mask. In order, Samwise draws everything they need off the top. First Magic Cylinder to equalize life points, then Nightmare Wheel to burn me down and save them from lethal, all while I'm staring at two copies of Mobius I couldn't summon. I lost this one, and it was purely my fault. Game 3, no heavy storm to the start as trademarked, but I'm opened on Spirit Reaper and ripping cards out. I have the Dust Tornado for Masked this time. Uh, Mobius is getting back row out of the way, and then I meta Mobius into Ryu Senshi, who can convert any of the high burst damage traps into mere 1k pings just in case. Samwise tries to stabilize with Floodgates, but I just answer with more copies of Mobius, and the game is over in a few turns, taking home the crown for Monarchs. So, this has been my perspective looking back through the January monthly. If you like this sort of thing, if you learn anything from it, be sure to let me know and I might keep doing more like this in the future. If you're watching this and you haven't played in the format before, you can find the Reaper format server on Discord, get set up there. It's a good time, especially if you like Monarch gameplay and similar to what I've showcased here. Good games all, and to all, a good night.